President Trump has set off what could end up becoming a full-blown trade war. As we go down this path, it's worth keeping something firmly in view. Tariffs don't work. I'm not spouting free market theory. I'm simply making a practical observation. There have been many efforts in recent decades to help industries in decline in America. I can think of no case where tariffs have worked to reverse that decline, except temporarily. Take the most recent example before Trump. Tariffs on tires put in place by President Obama. In 2009, after complaints from American companies about cheap Chinese imports, the Obama administration slapped a 35% tariff on Chinese tires. As many as 1,200 jobs were saved in the tire industry, according to the Peterson Institute. But the Institute also estimates that American consumers paid about $1.1 billion more in higher prices, which caused 3,700 jobs to be lost in the retail sector. The cost per tire job saved was almost $1 million per job. In addition, China retaliated with tariffs on American chicken producers, which, Peterson says, led to $1 billion in lost sales. As for the long-term effect, well, in 2008, before the tariffs, there were 60,000 Americans working in the tie industry. By 2017, there were 55,000. Or consider Trump's steel and aluminum tariffs. The pro-tariff Alliance for American Manufacturers claims that 12,700 jobs have been saved or added. But the Peterson Institute calculates that higher steel prices cost American companies about $11.5 billion a year, or $1 million per steel job saved. U.S. aluminum production has risen slightly, but it is still well below 2015 levels. The nonpartisan National Bureau for Economic Research released a paper in March observing that Trump had ushered in the largest return to protectionism since the Smoot-Hawley tariffs of the 1930s and the brief Nixon shock of 1971. The scholars calculated that Trump's tariffs last year cost American consumers and firms a staggering $68.8 billion a year. America now has the highest tariffs among the G7, the group of the world's leading industrialized countries. Over time, other nations will surely become more protectionist as well. And history suggests, once imposed, tariffs are hard to repeal, since domestic lobbies that benefit will advocate fiercely for their retention. One example. In 1964, retaliating for a European tax on American chickens, the U.S. placed a 25% tariff on light trucks. The chicken tax was long ago repealed, but the truck tariff of 1964 remains in place. It's true that China has been something of a trade cheat, though more often than not, it has been clever in using and manipulating the rules to its benefit, not breaking them. But to put things in perspective, according to a 2015 Credit Suisse tally, the country that imposed the most non-tariff protectionist measures since 1990 was the United States of America, with three times the number as China. Many of Trump's demands on China, by the way, have nothing to do with opening up markets. We're going to give them lists of things that we'd like them to buy. They are shopping lists presented to Beijing for goods, mostly produced in states that the president wants to win in 2020. Think soybeans grown in the Midwest. It's less a trade strategy than a re-election strategy. In fact, it actually moves China in the direction of greater statism, since the only way Beijing can fulfill Trump's wish list is to have the government or state-owned enterprises buy the goods. Donald Trump's trade strategy might have started out well-intentioned, but it has turned into a highly politicized, out-of-control wrecking ball that could end up destroying a system that has brought peace and prosperity to the world for 75 years. For more, go to cnn.com slash Farid and read my Washington Post column.